Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Despite persecution that often results in the killing of believers, clergymen, and religious, the church in Africa is growing. According to the report of The Pillar, a Catholic media outlet, the continent is growing in importance within the Catholic Church, and it will be a hub of Catholicism in the decades to come. In 2020, Africa had a population of 1.3 billion people, of which half are Christians. The continent has 236 million Catholics who are 90% of the global Catholic population, and their number is rising. The conversion of the sub-Saharan Africa in the first half of the 20th century and the exponential growth of the population spurred Christianity. Africa is growing in importance within the Catholic Church and is poised to become an even more important global center of Catholicism. It is estimated that by 2050, African Catholics will comprise 32% of the Catholic Church. More than a thousand pro-life supporters are expected to gather in Montana here in the U.S. for the annual March for Life next week. The event will be held on January 14, and the rally will begin at the Montana State Capitol Rotonda. The gathering of pro-life local supporters from various organizations and agencies will emphasize the need to protect the unborn and their mothers. This annual march will be presided over by the state's first pro-life governor in 16 years, Greg Gianforte. Following his address, Matt Britton of 40 Days for Life General Counsel and Angela Copenhaver of We Teach Think will present the human from Day One Project. Many other pro-life organizations, such as Students for Life, Catholic Adoption Services, and Helena Fertility Care will also participate in the march. In the U.S., Bishop Edward Malisic of Cleveland has extended his condolences on the killing of a young police officer in a shooting on New Year's Eve. In a statement, the bishop prayed that the Lord grant Officer Shane Bartek eternal rest and comfort his family, police force, and all who mourn his passing. The 25-year-old officer was killed during a carjacking in the Camps Corner neighborhood of Cleveland while he was off-duty. An 18-year-old girl named Tamara McCloyd was charged with aggravated murder in connection with the shooting. Bishop Malisic appealed to the people of goodwill in the community to work together and take steps to address the plague of violent crime. He also sought prayers for all those whose lives have been torn apart by violence. The Archbishop of Florence in Italy, Cardinal Giuseppe Battori, has condemned the vandalization of the statue of the child Jesus in the nativity scene outside Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral in the city. On New Year's Eve, four young people damaged the figure of the child Jesus. Security camera footage revealed that young people taking life-size statue of baby Jesus came out of the crush and taking selfies in its place. One of them was lifting the statue like a trophy. The terracotta statue of the baby Jesus was damaged with four broken toes on the right foot. Calling the incident an outrage, Cardinal Bettori said that it is a vile gesture that offends believers. Noting that the incident is an offense to a popular tradition that is widely spread and shared among the people, Cardinal Bettori added that the vandalism wounds all of Florence and Florentines. With over a million children obliterated, abortion once again became the leading cause of death across the world last year. According to the data released by U.S.-based Worldometer, nearly 43 million unborn were killed in the womb in 2021, while 58.7 million people died from other causes. Based on the reports, infants in the womb accounted for over 42% of death in 2021. According to Worldometer, in 2020, abortion has accounted for the greatest number of deaths with 42.7 million babies killed in the womb. U.S.-based Worldometer data set is voted one of the best free reference websites by the American Library Association. It is run by a global team of researchers, developers, and volunteers. 
Bishop Jaime Abril Gonzalez of the Arauca Diocese in Colombia has called for peace and dialogue as armed confrontations between insurgent groups in the Arauca region has taken the lives of at least 23 people. Fighting broke out between members of the National Liberation Army, ELN, and the dissidents of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia in the Arauca region bordering Venezuela in the late hours of January 2nd. According to the Colombian army, groups were fighting over control of illegal economies, including narcotics trafficking. The situation is particularly worse in municipalities of Tame, Fortul, Saravena, and Arauquita. Expressing deep concern, Bishop Gonzalez said in a video message that those who generate this violence should leave communities out of these confrontations and hostilities. The Catholic bishop have also demanded for a safer humanitarian corridor for civilians leaving the territories. The Chinese government is striking at the roots of press freedom in Hong Kong. Now, yet another independent media house in the city has been forced to shut down. On Sunday, Citizen News, a crowdfunded nonpartisan platform established in 2017, announced that they are ceasing operations on Tuesday as they are no longer feeling safe to work. The decision comes less than a week after police raided the office of another independent media house, Stand Media, and arrested their staff for sedition. Announcing the closure, the media group said that the deteriorating media environment has forced them to make this decision as they can no longer clearly see the lines of law enforcement after the implementation of the draconian national security law in the former British colony. The news website, which has over 800,000 followers, was founded by veteran journalists, including Chris Young, a former president of the Hong Kong Journalist Association. This is the third media outlet to be closed in Hong Kong ever since the new law was implemented. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.